drinking caffeine for a while due to some illnesses by drinking coffee. Well, coffee doesn't really do it for me anymore, but one of these Red Bulls, not the big ones, but the, was this 8.4 uh, ounce can? Yeah, this puts a little pep in my step <laughs> for sure. So, eh, hey, if it works, it works, right? So this video is gonna be a series of vlog videos I'm gonna start doing since I think I have enough people watching my videos now where this actually makes sense. So I'm gonna start doing some, you know, random vlog stuff, nothing like super specific, you know, a lot of this is probably just gonna be driving and talking videos. Um, really, I mean, honestly, it's filler content for me because I have a lot of big content projects working. Um, just something to keep the momentum going and uh, keep people engaged with uh, the videos here on the channel. So. Uh, but I'm going to try to make them still as entertaining as I can and, you know, maybe some informal videos while I can, you know. It's not completely a waste of your time. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be my first vlog video uh, for the FOMO Cobra YouTube channel. So I got to tell you, a couple things I'm going to touch in this video. I think this video is basically going to go over the SHO and all the things that all the quirks I find with this car. You know, I love this car. It's a, it's an awesome car. Um, in, in the grand scheme of things for a modern car, it really isn't, it isn't that hard to work on. The biggest pain in the butt reason why this car is a pain to work on is because they fit so much in such a small, you know, package, right? Like, it's it's kind of annoying um but it's really just because of that i mean the components themselves aren't necessarily hard to understand or work with or put together or take apart or whatever um it's just the fact that everything is basically stacked on top of each other and it's like uh if you've ever built a computer um especially if you ever took a laptop apart or even took your phone apart you would know what I'm talking about. Like to get to something at the bottom, you literally gotta take everything off from the top first. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of like, a, it's an annoying thing with this car. But aside from that, working on this car really isn't that big of a deal. And it's really not that unreliable once you work out the stupid kinks that plague this car, you know? You know, just recently I went through a pretty extensive repair uh, replacing the knock sensor because I was having extreme false knock issues it was uh, it was a bit annoying you know and and that's an issue that's plague this platform uh, from the get-go and it's not super common on on 13 and ups but apparently it still happens because I had to deal with it and quite honestly after replacing the knock sensors with the new revised Ford piece this car runs better than ever. Um, so I, it was definitely some issues there that I'm glad I worked out. And another thing that I've had to go with this car is another one of its stupid quirks. Um, and that's the drivetrain issues. You know, I've had, thankfully, and this is why when I made my video, if this was a good car, is the Taurus SHO a good car? You can always revisit that video. But when I made that video, I stressed that it is in important if you buy this car you must and buy a warranty extended powertrain warranty with it because you will use it and it will pay for itself i guarantee you that um you know i've had this car for what uh two a year and a half now and i've put my powertrain warranty to use you know and i'll be 100 percent transparent i paid $2,000 for that warranty. $2,000 is a drop in the bucket for what the warranty company paid for repairs on this car. Um, I think between uh, a slight transmission issue I had um, and having that work done and then having the PTU replaced because we all know those are just ticking time bombs even after flushing it a few times. Uh, it still needed to be replaced and after doing all that it was almost ten thousand dollars worth of work That was done and I'm glad I had that warranty because I would have never paid for that It would have never have gotten done. I'd have been driving around with a leaky transmission and a whining uh, PTU until things just didn't work anymore 
So all in all, I paid $2,000 for the warranty um, and I paid probably another between the loaner vehicle I had for a week and then my deductibles and all the other stupid small things that the warranty doesn't cover, it was, it was less than a thousand. So let's say $3,000 and it saved me 10. Uh, if you're good with numbers, you would know that was a solid investment. So yeah, I'm glad I bought the warranty with the vehicle and uh, I'm glad that it did what it was supposed to do because I needed it. You know, and that's another thing. I had to deal with, you know, all those stupid repairs. But now with those out of the way, there's only one, there's only one real thing left that could really go wrong and ruin my day. Um, and I think it's already started. So, you know, the turbochargers on these cars are basically, uh, you know, they like to tap out at around 100,000 miles. And uh, it, it's like clockwork because we got 98,000 miles on the car and I'm starting to see more and more oil in the charge pipes every time and it's just crazy it is like clockwork that they just fail at a hundred thousand miles um but you know that i don't really want to stress about because when they go oh we ain't putting factory ones back on no sir we are not putting factory turbos back on this so um i'm hoping by that time i hope that they they stay intact long enough uh that it financially won't be an issue hopefully maybe my channel will be up and monetized and and uh you know my facebook and all that and all these other sources of income that i'm trying to produce um hopefully all that will be straightened out so uh, i can just kind of do what i need to do and uh, we'll be a-okay man i tell you what i just left wawa and uh because i had to get air in my tire i forgot to do it when i left and uh, People need to learn how to use an air pump. Holy hell, or or this, or how about people need to understand when they need to put air in their tire. Oh my God. No wonder people have so many blowouts because they don't know how to properly inflate their tires. Um, it's just freaking ridiculous. You know, it doesn't take five minutes per tire to put air in it. Oh my God. I, and I, I just had one, so I don't, this is another quirk of this car. I have one tire, always goes low. I don't know if it's because of, you know, how you, when you launch these cars, it gets all weird. I don't know, but it's always the front left tire. Okay, the front driver's side tire always loses air. And um, actually I had, uh, I noticed that in other SHOs. I don't know why, I, I really don't know why. But I just need to get air in that one tire and go, oh my God. You go to Royal Farms, all the air pumps are broken. All of them. You go to Wawa and there's like a freaking line, you know, to the back of the gas station just for the air pump and no one knows how to use it. Okay, there's some people. Like, look, this guy in the big dually pickup truck, uh, let's see, he, he filled up his basically flat tire, big, big, big tires. Um, and uh, let's see, probably a couple of minutes or so, uh, and this little lady in a little tiny car with little tiny wheels, uh, she took about 10 minutes. Come on, you, you got, it's like, this is part of owning a vehicle. You should know at least the basics. You gotta know how to put air in your tire. And uh, see, I think what the thing is, you know, some those air pumps, they get all nasty. Sometimes they don't seat correctly on the valve stem and people may not know that um i don't know so you know they're sitting there and a lot of air is leaking out from the from the uh you know the, the thing that goes on the valve stem to put the air in i can't think that the chuck and um you know i don't think they understand that it needs to be fully seated to put all the air in at once um, oh, and another thing people don't do is use one of these. I never, ever trust what those pumps say, ever. I always double check it with, uh, uh, you know, an air gauge. No one does that. Always keep one of those in your car. I mean, it's just common. 
See, I guess coming from an enthusiast, it's different, right? You know, like we know front to back about our cars. That's why we are who we are. But some people, I just don't, you know, a car to them is like uh, a microwave. They probably don't even read the instructions. They just get it out of the box and they use it. That's, it is what it is, right? So, um, <laughs> end rant. <laughs> back to the car, all in all, you know, yeah, it's got its quirks. I think it's generally a good car. Um, it's, you know, will I get another one? When I first got this car, I was in such awe over it because it was all new to me. I love it. Um, it's a great car. It's a great car for now. It's a great car for as long as it's working. Will I get another one if something happens to this one? Probably not. I'll be honest. I, I won't. And it's not because I don't like the car. But I've already spent so much time with this car uh, fixing all the little kinks and the little bugs. Um, I don't want to have to go through it again. I really don't. And I just want to, you know, work. I, I'd rather spend my money on performance mods, making the car faster, than just fixing things that shouldn't have to be fixed. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. So... So if I lose this car to an accident, yeah, I will not get another one. If something happens to the engine or anything major in this car, um, I'm gonna try to keep on to it. It's just gonna be like this. I really need to get some some more money and in, incoming. You know, that's why I was really hoping. I was really hoping for the YouTube channel to kind of fund at least my car you know, passion, you know, at least working on them and doing whatever. Uh, but if something happens to like the powertrain or whatever, the engine just takes a dump on me, I'll keep the car as long as I can afford to, um, because I want to, I want to uh, see the capabilities of this platform, you know, in stock form, you can't do it, you know, and there's no reason to rebuild right now, right? So uh, I'm just going to go with it for as long as possible. But yeah, if the um, event happens where there's an accident or something and the car is totaled, not even rebuildable. Like even if I get in an accident and it's totaled by the insurance company, as long as it's not like super major damage, it's fixable, I'll still probably work on the car. But if it's, if it's beyond repair, I won't keep it and I won't get another. I don't even know what I would get quite honestly. I, I love my Fords. You know, the whole channel is about Fords, um, but it's, it suck because a lot of the Fords now are a bit lackluster and, and it, don't get me wrong I love a lot of woods out there like uh, the Explorers are cool but they're having their issues and I really don't want to go down that road again um, so I don't know and the thing is I don't really want an SUV I love cars I like my cars so yeah, and Ford's not making them. So either I go with an older Ford car or I go with a different brand. And, you know, that's, it's not that I don't want to. It's just because I want to, whatever I get, I would love to be able to feature on the channel. Since I'm a Ford-focused channel, not Ford-focused, Ford-focused channel, I want to keep it that way. So the next car is going to have to be something revolving around. Ford. What it will be, I don't know. I really don't. We'll, uh, we'll cross that road when it comes, you know? It is what it is. Now, see, I've always said my next car payment is going to be a GT350. However, if I need a daily driver, I certainly don't want to uh, have a GT350 as a daily. Um, and it's not that I don't, I wouldn't use it as a daily, because I certainly would, but you know, I definitely need a little bit more practicality in a vehicle, um, and that's why I opted to get what I got. Honestly, before I got the SHO, I was actually looking at uh, Fiesta STs, and it's like, oh crap, you got how you go from the tiniest little car Ford makes to the biggest car Ford makes. It's like I know, right? But that that's kind of what it came down to because I wanted something that was. When I was looking at the Fiesta, it was relatively cheap, you know, 
you could get a pretty much two year old Fiesta ST with 30,000 miles for like 16 grand. Um, it, they're good on gas, they're fun cars, they're, they're quick, you know, uh, they're small, they're easy to park, you know. I thought, man, they really can't go wrong with it. But I always had a fire in me um, about the SHOs. It's just never a thought, it's, it was never a car I thought I could obtain. I thought it was a little bit out of my league, quite honestly. Um, and then I'm like, well, you know, I could definitely use the space. Um, the Taurus has excellent amount of space. It's a comfortable car, you know, it's nice size. Um, and I'm like, well, the SHO, it's all wheel drive. I live in Maryland, we have snow. That could probably be beneficial. And I've had people, you know, I've had bosses that own the cars and they loved them, they said, you know, they were, they were trucking through the snow when, you know, all these four-wheel drive trucks are sitting in the ditches. I thought it was funny, but no, I could see how that would happen. You know, these all-wheel drive systems, they're not superb when it comes to the performance side of it, but for traction, they work pretty good. And so, yeah, I really, that's what came down to me picking the SHO overall is because it was the more practical vehicle no and not in the sense of economy absolutely not I'm pretty sure that my Cobra gets better fuel economy than this um, but overall this is the better car and it's super safe you know this has extremely good crash test ratings um, and that's really important to me too because uh, in this area accidents are just it's it's crazy people it's it's ride or die you know, I know every state seems to have that saying, but people in Baltimore, man, they will run you off the road and not even look back. It's crazy. You know, if you can drive in Baltimore, you can drive anywhere. I trust, trust me, trust me on that. So I hope you like this first vlog video. I'm definitely gonna start doing these a lot more often. Uh, like I said, as filler content. And you know, just kind of give my audience a little bit more insight into who I am you know uh, I think it's kind of cool um, when people engage with these vlog videos uh, you know with other youtubers that you know it's, it's a little bit more personal and I, I like that you know I think it's cool because it's more you can connect more with your audience and just I mean in people in general so you know I definitely thank you for watching this first video there are gonna be many more to come uh, assure you and uh, there's gonna be a lot of cool, more exciting content to come. I'm gonna try to bust my butt to get as much content out as quick as possible. I am determined like there is no tomorrow to get my channel monetized as soon as possible. You know, we're almost, almost 500 subs. We need to get to that magical 1,000 subscriber mark before we can apply um, for the uh, YouTube partnership program and monetize the channel But once we get that we have so much watch time that it, it's just a matter of getting the su subscribers So once I get my thousand subs, I will apply for um, a YouTube partnership program and we're gonna start you know once I get approved to that that is going to be That is that's my first milestone on the channel. I hit that we're just going to go through the roof you know, so I'm gonna start busting out content left and right here to get some nice cool stuff on the channel to watch. Keep everyone engaged, keep everyone happy and everyone wanting to watch my videos and everyone wanting to subscribe. So keep a lookout for those. So that is it for this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends and family. If you wanna see more content like this, then please subscribe to the channel and keep a lookout for that next video.